Hey, this is Big Gene from Raw Deal of Lies, Big Night. Uh, my next live, I'm going to be doing. I'm going to do some cooking on my next live because I got a call from one of the young ladies, and you say, Gene, I like when you cook, and I know some of you fellas, you know, you may like it or disagree with it, or you may. Uh, take some of the recipes I heard yourself and you try for your family. So I'm going to do a dessert and probably do some little cooking on the side, you know, fry some fish up or something like that. Uh, let me see who I had in here. I got the the live on the Instagram and I'm live here on YouTube. I'm doing it at home. Uh, so I got I'll be going back and forth like this. So if y'all see me looking like this, Going back and forth, I ain't going crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, today, I'm going to tell a story why Chaz and Supreme had beef. Now, everybody knows Supreme from the Supreme team. Uh, allegedly, and, and I don't really have to say allegedly, but according to court documentations and stuff like that, he was over um, a drug cartel in Queens. You know what I'm saying? How true of that? Don't know. Um, he was also uh, allegedly, they said he had put some hits out on some people like that. We don't really know because a lot of times I know for a fact that sometimes people who work those cases be making up a lot of shit to make their cases. Because when they make certain cases, they are able to go up the ladder. So they'll use snitches. They'll use um, people who are trying to get out of trouble themselves in order to build cases and go up the ladder. That's just the truth of it. I've seen it done. You understand? I've been, a, I've been there watching it get done. And I'll be like, yo, it's fucking right. Yo. It's crazy. I've been there. But um, let me go back here and see. Can I? I know my, my my brother Ice was the first one in here. Salute to you, Ice. What's going on with you, boy? Lucky Lefty 94. Us JWW32. Dougie 54. KG. What up, y'all? All oh, y'all, man. Thank y'all for being here, man. And the first ones out here. You know, uh, it's like I could just sit back, man, because people are talking and every story that if you follow me and for the people who've been following me for uh, the year and a half, two years that I've been on here on my own platform, they have seen a lot of shit that I've said come true. Look at, I said this last week, Faith. Said on on YouTube or on somebody's channel that she was thrown through a window. Who told y'all that first? I did. Look at Irv Gotti, and I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, 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 Irv Gotti told y'all the Fifty Cent stuff. Who told y'all that first about how they were doing Fifty, and he has every right to go at him like he do? Who told y'all that story first? I told y'all that story first, you know, because I was there when it was going down. Unique came on this other kid's story and told y'all his stuff about the information he gave us about vesting up and those guys were going to come kill us. That night, Big got killed. You know what I'm saying? So all that stuff, you know, I told y'all prior to it. And, um, what motherfucker was saying? I was in the sky chasing. I was, uh, I was, I what they call? It? I was in the, in, I was, I was, I was chasing the moon. What they said I was doing, y'all? I was, I was, I was chasing the moon. I was chasing the sky. I was reaching for the stars. What, what what's that terminology they say? Yeah, somebody help me with that, man. What's that terminate terminology, y'all? Lee, Lee, Lee McGinnis. Kenny B, Richie Luxury, 
What's that? What's, what's that? What's that? Mickey Crip. What's that they said I was doing, man? Q up. Yo, help me. What they said I was doing? Did they say I was clout chasing when I was just trying to tell y'all stories that I was involved in? They said I was clout chasing. I'm wilding. Muddy Waters. Yo, what up? They said I was clout chasing. Can he beat Baltimore in the house? Yes. They said I was clout chasing. Now, y'all hear the stories right out the people's mouth. You get it? That's kind. That's right, Clan. I live that shit. Just Jay is on YouTube. Uh, Just Jay on my Instagram. She don't follow me on the YouTube no more. She was like, I'm not being none of your moderator. I said, okay. She said, because you always going at me when I uh, 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 put the people on timeout, when I do that to the people. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, and furthermore, uh, if I could reach through the phone and slap you for going off on me, I'd do it. I was like, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. She was just sunning me. I ain't gonna be none of your moderator no more. I was like, okay, all right. Then I said, can I have a kiss? And she said, yes. No, she did. <laughs> what a what a sixty. What's that? Sixty three freak freak of valley. Jason Tatum. From St. Louis. I heard he the one did that Wolves court at Wolves. I used to play up at Wolves too. Yes, sir. Right there on Kings Highway and St. Louis Avenue. I'm looking at the uh the Instagram too. How y'all doing out there in the Instagram world, man? How y'all doing in the YouTube world? I'm going back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, so today. I'm going to tell a story about Chaz and Supreme. Now, one of the YouTubers out there, he said, yo, y'all got to realize Gene was around and all these gangsters came to Gene because Gene had a wealth of information. You know, you got to realize a lot of people who come out of jail, you know what I'm saying, they needed some a support system. And a lot of times they didn't get things right and they didn't know what they can and cannot do. You understand? And those guys who entrusted me, such as Chaz and Supreme and other dudes around them, Todd, uh, Rufus, Bones, all the Black Hands crews and stuff like that, when they had issues and problems, they want to know something, especially legally, they will come to me about, you know, the parole super, su supervision and everything like that, because penal, penal law and executive law is two different things. You understand? So I was able to help them when everything when they were right when you're right you're right i don't care who doing the case so uh those guys will come to me and everything like that me and supreme and chas and them you know we would go out and eat and chill and stuff like that because they were working on a project together and that project was black gangster and i told you about this black gangster part of it the black gangster album has every hip hop person that was hot in New York, 50, Ja Rule, DMX, Jay-Z, everybody that was hot on that album. You understand? And you you wondering how could they get all those compilation, get all those people on those albums? And that was because mainly because of Supreme. You understand? Supreme, uh, you know, went to them on the behalf of Chaz. You understand? To get them on that album to do those songs that they did. Tools for this shit. What's up with you? Salute to you. 56 Hondo. Yes, yes, yes. This is it's this jet thing, man. You know, I just, you know, I wear it because I got it for, you know, short money. 
<laughs> I'm not a fan of nobody, man, for real. I'm not a fan of, you know, no teams and nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? King Yusha, what's up with you, big homie? Me and King Yusha be having some good conversations, you know. I, I, I really wish I could really just break it down to him because he was on the money with some of the stuff that he was saying behind the scenes. All right. So now, Chaz and Supreme, you know, they gangsters from way back. You know, if you know the Chaz story, you know Supreme's story, Supreme ran the 40, 40 projects and everything like that. I didn't know one time when Alpo took his team out there to play against them that they was playing against Supreme now. Big Smiley, all of them and everything like that. Some of the same game dudes. I didn't know because I was fresh in the city around that time. You understand? But um, they were going out there playing $20,000 a game. <laughs> Easy. So uh, Supreme was a big dude from Queens. You understand? You know Chaz. Chaz, you know, allegedly robbed 160 banks. <laughs> How do you rob 160 banks and get away with it? Didn't get caught. Didn't get caught in the bank st sticking nobody up because he was going, go look at his story. He was going to school in college on a furlough from prison, going, robbing the bank, coming back to the school, going back to his jail cell. You understand? <laughs> had put the money, had got an apartment in the city, and got, this was all in the Detroit area, and put put the money up, and then go back to his cell. Somebody got caught doing something else and told on him. That's crazy. But anyway, they was putting this album together. And uh, everybody was doing things. Jay-Z had came to do his thing. And then um, I was telling Chaz, yo, Chaz, you got to get Jay-Z a hot beat. You get Jay-Z a hot beat. And this album is going out the window. Because Jay was on fire then. He had found himself. You understand? He did that Money Ain't a Thing with uh, Jermaine Dupri. And you know, that was the only thing that was hot on the album down there. You know what I'm saying? So, and that went platinum. So, Jay-Z wouldn't take a hot beat. You know what I'm saying? Even though his song was fair on the album, you understand? He wouldn't take a hot beat. Hi, Spoiled Girl. What's up with you? He wouldn't take a hot beat. Chaz had gotten some hot beats from, yo, he had he had this dude, Doc. Doc was doing his thing. He had this other kid, uh, 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 Shalom and G Money, his son. They was putting beats together. They was getting beats together. And they was ready to, you know, that black gangster would have been crazy. But nobody would take a up tempo beat to make it a, 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 a record, an album that people had to play that record on the radio. And they did that on purpose. I'm not trying to ignore you guys over there. Uh, on that night out there in Chi-Town, well-known tone, what up with y'all, boy? I'm not ignoring y'all at all, man. But this is my YouTube show. <laughs> Big Gene, what's your main DMV represent? All right. Yeah, allegedly. Real shit. So now, I don't know why they're doing that. I don't know. I'm going to leave that alone. When I'm going to tell y'all about the BMF story, no, I'm going to chill with the BMF story. I'm going I'm to do that on the second part of my, my second book when I get this first one done. I got to get the first shit done. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, Chaz and uh, Supreme 
was mad cool. But anytime there's money involved, situations get hot and they get heated. Now, we was all at the Sharks Bar. If anybody remember the Sharks Bar, it was on Columbus Avenue, I think 74th Street or something like that. And I'm talking about, yo, my man, yo, it was one of the best upscale soul food restaurants that you're going to ever eat at. Oh, my God, nigga, you be, you be no homo biting your knuckles. That's how good the food is. The Sharks Bar food was crazy. So we all at the Sharks Bar just chilling and everything like that, and we eating. And now this bill is about like four, five hundred dollars. But you know, I ain't gotta worry about it. I'm with them. I'm with the. I'm with the big, with the big homies and everything like that. So then they got all this food that they didn't eat. It's like four or five of us. The bill like five, six hundred dollars and everything like that. And all this food is left over and everything like that. You know, and I'm like. The lady said, "Yo, you want me to wrap that up? To, uh, wrap that up to go?" And they was like, "Nah, uh." -uh. And I said, "Huh?" And Chaz was like, "Man, you know we don't take no food out." I'm like, "What?" He said, "We don't take no food out the restaurant." And I was like, "For real?" She. <laughs> Good as this food is, now I've been at the Sharks Bar before. You know, that's the type of place when you take a honey and you want to be, you want to impress her and see, do she know what side her forks go on and the other side, what side her food go on? And is she using the dinner fork or the dessert fork? You know what I'm saying? You, you're trying to check out her, her pedigree. So it's the type of place that you want to go and that you want to take a honey like that so you would know what's going on with her. You understand? When she ordered her meal, she said, can I have some scrimp? Can I have some scrimps and some... Have anybody been in a situation... Oh, I don't, I don't, am I the only one been in a situation like that? Michael. Mike561. Riddle. Have you been in a situation like that? Did so somebody say I had some scrimps? You with a chip? No, okay. You ain't been in no situation like that, Mike? All right. Vino Dark at the one. Back at you. You already know. Y'all too suave. I don't go my man Damien Simmons. What's up? Y'all too suave. Primo. Tranquilo suave. William James, what up? Respect to you. So now, they telling me I can't take this. Man, listen here. I slid the woman $20. I said, wrap my food up. And I'll be back. I'll be back. Just put it up to the front. Wrap my food up for me. You understand? You know, because all the appetizers, I was full. You understand? But wrap this up for me. You understand? And I'll be right back. Yo, these niggas left, got up off the out off the table and left all men. Man, I was like, these niggas is crazy. They barely touched they shit. I wish I knew them like that. Or I was with them like that. I'd have got all that shit and wrapped it up. But I said, no, nah, listen, I said, wrap my food up and I'll be right back to get it. And sit in a little 20 spot. Just put it at the front door. Tell the maitre d' I'll be back to get. I just got. I'm going to check on my car. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check on my car. You know what I'm saying? Because we all drove in separate cars and everything like that. So boom. As soon as they left, yeah. All right, man. What's up? All right, y'all, dog. I see y'all later. <laughs> Went back and got my food. See, <laughs> and anybody who ever ate at the Sharks Bar know what I'm talking about. It ain't Sweetie Pies. <laughs> Sweetie Pies, I'd have threw that shit in the garbage for <laughs> Yo, my St. Louis people, I'm just telling y'all. 
it ain't hitting like it's supposed to be hitting. Yo, there was a place that operated like Sweetie Plies back in the day. It was called Copeland's on 145th Street between Broadway and Amsterdam, where you could go and sit down and get your tray and all that stuff like that, and your plates and all like that, and you could go sit down. That's how Sweetie Pies is. Yo, Sweetie Pie couldn't fuck with Copeland's. Copeland's used to be the joint. You understand? And they had a, a, a restaurant next to it. So now, Chaz and uh, Supreme is in this project together, but I don't really know that they own it like that. I'm just thinking this Chaz project. You understand? So when I'm willing and dealing and going to get people or, you know, making sure he has an avenue to talk to this person to talk to this person because I knew numbers. Because back in the day, you know, it. I don't care what rapper or who was doing what or what team from Rough Riders, Murder, Inc., from, from uh, Bad Boy, from... Uh, Buster Rhyme, Fat Joe, any of those teams, TS, any of those teams out there, I had contact numbers for them. I had contact where I could get in touch with them if I needed to. You understand? So I was that dude, and I could say that. You understand? Y'all could say that too now because you see a lot of stuff that Big Gene is talking about is coming out and it's coming to be true. 2020. All right? What are we talking about? All right. Brittany 2424. Judge McGriff. What are with y'all? I don't know why that's doing that. Brittany 2424. Yeah. Brittany, Brittany says she be saying scrimps. You be saying scrimps, Brittany. Brittany says she be saying scrimps on Instagram. Not to touch his Louisiana in the house. Squirrel B.O. Squire B.O. 318. Yeah, they all them teams suck. I guess <laughs> he loved my family. I don't care nothing about the Jets or nothing like that. I think I may have paid 19. It is in broader and all like that. I probably paid like $19 for this joint. But this shit is fresh, dog. Throw my Jets hat on, my green sneakers, or or, 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 or the Gucci loafers with the green in them. You know what I'm saying? You got the jeans on, and then you might have the, uh, take this off right quick. You got the green, and then you might throw the, throw, the, throw the light little Gucci loafers on, you know, with the green and matching that, with that, you know? So if the, if the Jets sucks, what I got on don't. I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay killing them way before this and after. That old dude is, that old dude's nice right there. So now, we say our buys and our, our good buys, I sneak back in there and I get them scrimps. <laughs> Mike Jones, what up with you? I go back and I get those scrimps. Yeah, Matula is a Williams. Yeah, that's that's Chad's first cousins. Man, listen now, nah, y'all can say Gucci, y'all can do all like this. Man, I'm gonna wear my shit. I paid good money for them shits back then, and I'm gonna keep on wearing them. I don't care what nobody saying, cause them niggas is. They'll sit up here in front with y'all, but you'll see them out. And they'll have their Gucci on. They'll have all their shit. Uh, I'm going to give it some rappers I know from St. Louis. Um, I know a few rappers from St. Louis. You understand? Uh, my little cousin, uh, my little niece, Ashley, Paris, she was hot in the motherfucker. And Big Head Tony was hot. You know what happened to him. Um, then I was the one. I'm going to get back to my thing. I ain't going to forget y'all. I just want to. This got to be somebody from St. Louis. But I was the one who 
had what's his name? Uh, uh, forgot this kid name. Uh, Hitman, Hitman Holler. I was the first one who put him on to T Rex. They battled on the phone when they was about 12 and 13 years old. And I put that together. You understand? Way back then, when they were 12 and 13 years old. Because I used to take T-Rex around Queens and Bronx. And I used to make money by letting him battle niggas who thought they was hot. And he was only 12 years old then. Thanks, Miss Green, for the cash app. I appreciate it. Brittany, you still on those scrimps? <laughs> yeah. What city in New Jersey did the space alien arrive? <laughs> All right. What rappers you know? Okay. So uh she had my my little my little niece Paris, she got a, a thing out there with the uh the team, the basketball team and stuff. So she does promotions and stuff. She had put me on a few rappers out there. A couple of dudes that were nice. I the, the name escapes me right now. And, and, and this girl got in touch with me from out there in St. Louis. I forgot her name. You know, she, you know, she needed a little work, but she, you know, she had promise. Star. Her name's Star. Star something. She's from St. Louis. Her name's Star something. But, you know, she needed a little work, but she, 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 she's capable. So now I go back and get my food and everything like that. So we will be meeting at uh, back at Black Hands, right? Album is done and everything like that. And we go out there. Oh, now you up by Boss Man? Boss Man quick? All right. So, um... We go back over to Black Hands, and uh, I don't know, Chaz didn't make it, or Chaz wasn't there. I don't know, Chaz went to do something else, and Preem pulled me to the side, and Preem hit me up. He was like, yo, man, old dude, um, ain't doing the money right on this album thing, so I'm like, I don't know shit about it. He said, and uh, I'm feeling a certain kind of way. So I'm like, so I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling a certain kind of way. Uh, so I'm saying, that's crazy, man. I said, I was like, yo, Preem, I just I just want to let you know, I don't know nothing about slim business like that, or what, whatever y'all doing, but you coming to me, telling me, or, 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 or speaking on me about this Black Gangsta album, because you know none of them dudes got paid for that. You know what I'm saying? They, they wasn't even taking the minimum. Aaron Rakowski, Thanks for this uh, super chat. Thanks for the cash app over there at Big Gene 52 and the PayPal at Big Gene 52. I appreciate that. Miss Miss Green, you've been a law supporter. I, I appreciate you for everything that you're doing. You know, I really do. Thank you for that. Tupac records records from there. That was nothing. That was really nothing up in there because Puff had a million niggas with him then. I was right there. That's the day Chaz, he wanted to know about, talk about the House of Blues thing. That's the day when Chaz cold cock Puff and hit him in the sternum and he lost his breath. I was dying. But anyway, so he uh, Supreme came to me and he hit me with the like, yo, dude, this, that, and the third. And like, oh, yo, Supreme, you know I'm going to say something to him. But, you know, I don't think you should be coming to me with that. 
I have none because, you know, me and Chaz, I used to be with Chaz every day. So I guess he just thought that I knew more than what I was supposed to know. Now, I wasn't there when Jaru did the Murder for Life uh, uh, video. I, I I used to love Ja. I used to have a lot of love for Ja, but I never fuck with Irv Gotti. You know, say Irv Gotti is the reason why Black Hand as a label never went nowhere. And I used to try to tell Chaz that, and he wouldn't believe me. You know, but Visionary TV, man, that was kind of disrespectful what you said about Supreme. And I'm just saying, bro, come on. Don't say nothing on my channel that you wouldn't say in that man's face. And that's why I dig men. And men need to man the fuck up. You know, I'm all about man the fuck up no matter where you at. And that's my whole new thing on my program. I want dudes to learn how to man up. You understand? If the nigga was standing right next to you, would you say what you said? Would you say, if, if you real like that, would you say what you said? Say what you said if a nigga was standing right next to you in that nigga face. You understand? No matter how good it may sound, or typing it up and everything like that, but man up all the time. And if you do that, and if you could do that, I ain't got no problem with you, bro. Respect to you. You understand? But I'm not going to repeat no dumb shit like that. And I'm just saying that, man, because you be a law supporter sometimes, but then sometimes you go all the way North with it. Lex Lucius, what's going on? Was out there in Cleveland, Cleveland, ECD Parker. My man BK Fame is on his way out there. Yes, sir. BK Fame, salute, bro. J Ham, PF. Peace with you, King. So, you know, uh, as me, now I got to go to Chaz and tell Chaz what's going on. You understand? Because what happens is, is that as a man, no one should be feel, feel safe or come to you about your man or people that you are in contact with and feel easy that they can say something that's irate or say something that don't seem to be right, you should be able to go back and tell people that you F with about it. And if you don't do that, that shit will blow up in your face. Because the nigga say, well, I told your man what was going on. And then now the nigga looking at you all side eyes and stuff because you ain't said nothing. And why you didn't say anything. So that's why I tell a man, like, if you, if you feel comfortable to say something to me, because it depends on what you say. And about somebody that I love. You understand? So if you say something to me and it's brother and family and it's our rate, they ain't got to worry about taking care of you because I'm going to take care of you myself because you can't feel comfortable saying nothing about somebody I love to me crazy. I'm going to check that. And then I'm going to tell them and then they're going to check it too. But I'm going to check you on that. So, you know, I felt a certain kind of way when Preem came to me and said that. And I just said to Prim, I said, yo, Prim, I got to tell old dude what you just said. And Prim looked at me like he didn't give a fuck. You understand? So then I went to Chaz. You understand? And this was, I think, before, this was before the Ja Rule and 50 fight. At um in Atlanta, it was it was the week before that. You understand? So I said, "Yo, Chad, uh, what's up with the um with the black hands? You know, and and and, and, and the money situation from the album and everything like that." And he was like, he looked at me strange, like, cause that's his business. He said, uh, he said, uh, wow. I said, because Preem come to me with it. And he had a problem with it. He said, so what did he say? And I told him what he said. I said, he was like, yo, that you wasn't issuing the money out or paying the people who's supposed to get paid off the album. 
And Chad was like, no, nah, he shouldn't be coming to you like that. And I was like, yo, bro, I know that. But what's up? He said, well, he got he to gotta figure out a, a better way to explain that. If he's explaining that to people or saying something about, he got to figure out a better way. And I was like, but bro, that's y'all business. That ain't got nothing to do with me. And he was like, I understand that. So my whole thing about it is, is that, you know, he came to me, but he had to come to me knowing that I was going to come to you because I told him I was going to come to you. So maybe this just was an avenue to open up the door about it. Yeah, but he shouldn't be talking to you about that, Gene. That's what Chaz told me. He got to find a better way. And that's how he left it. And they was beefing about that. They was beefing about that whole Black Gangster album. Because I think uh, Chaz ain't paying nobody. <laughs> From my understanding. <laughs> nobody got a dime. Woo, that was some shit right there. But that led to that whole 50 stuff. Because 50 wasn't the dude who was, 50 was like, he had management and everything. And Chaz was never his manager or nothing like that. You understand? Chaz just was a dude that, you know, his managers needed somebody to collect that money when 50 was doing shows and niggas would pay up the half and didn't want to pay the second half or whatever when he go do the shows. And they wasn't strong enough to go get that money or, 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 or take care of business like that. So Chaz put that team together to do that. So it wasn't like he was managing 50 and nothing like that, but it was more so, uh, It was more so of him. It was more so of him. Um, just being that street element that 50 needed to move around. Because when he did that album, uh, he did that song, Ghetto Quran and, and, and How to Rob an Industry Dude, everybody wanted to see what he was really made of. You understand? And Chaz had a couple of artists too because he was getting out of the, the 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 business where he was promoting parties. See, Chaz was promoting parties. We had some of the best parties everywhere from Vegas all over. You, I'm, I mean, like, Chaz was doing his thing with the party and he should have stuck with that and still did the rap thing. But, you know, People was in his ear talking about wasn't nobody going to take you serious if you were still doing party promotions and then you were still doing the rap industry. You know, you do you still want to be rappers and everything like that. And then he had this dude, Graf and Shalom. Now, Shalom, if anybody could get hold to his music, he was Drake before Drake was even thought about. That nigga got some hot shit off the chat. His name's Shalom. He was down in Atlanta doing some things. And when I'm telling you he had some hot shit, Shalom had some hot shit, man. And when I took Chaz to K Slay, because we was riding in the car, and Chaz was like, man, we got to get to this nigga K Slay, man. We got to get to K Slay. And I was like, so I'm looking at because K Slay is family. You know, so I'm saying see what he's trying to say. He said, yo, if we want to get into the rap shit, we have to get the case slay. So I'm just sitting back there laughing at the nigga. He said, yo, what's wrong? What's so funny? I said, nigga, that's my family. He said, uh, it's your family. I said, yeah, nigga, case slay my family. What are you talking about? He said, he said, case slay your family? I said, nigga, that's family lamb. And Chaz was like, get the fuck up out of here. He said, nigga, I've been trying to get to him for months. I heard he don't fuck with queens like that. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so uh, 
I said, yo, listen here, man. You want to talk to him now? He said, yeah. Yeah. I called him. I said, okay, where you at? He said, I'm in the lab. He used to have a, a studio on 118th and 1st Avenue. So then I said, yo, we going, we, let's go by the lab. He said, for real? I said, we went back there and I did the introduction to Graf, to K Slay, and Chaz to K Slay that day. And from that point on, K and Chaz was like, like, like big brothers. They was, you know, I was like K big brother. You know, whenever Chaz was a hell of a businessman, he was ruthless when it came to that business. You understand? So K uh, used to always run shit about him about business and things like that. Cause Chaz was, Chaz was, for, you know, he was crazy with it. So the whole thing about it is, is that Murder Inc. Irv Gotti never wanted Chaz to be big in the industry because Murder Inc. had enough power that he could go to a record label and say to anybody, yo, give him a deal. Well, he because they was giving out money. They they gave Graf for Graf first contract was eight hundred thousand dollars. You understand? And he ain't do the album never came out. He was the type of dude that was trying to tell Teddy Riley, yo, he tried to tell Kanye Watt, well, yo, that beat ain't hot. Next thing you know, somebody used the beat and they got the number one song in the country. <laughs> That's the kind of dude Graf was. You understand? Under the label with Chaz. And that's real talk. I've been, I ain't been paying attention to my Instagram people. Brooklyn's out there, ish, ish underscore Metcalf. Salute to you, you and Blondie. One, four, three, two, one. Michael underscore Jackson. That's Philly in the house. Yeah, dude said they they in Hawaii. Nigga, you in Hawaii? You talking to me? <laughs> yeah. Soul in the hole. I'm going to look that up, y'all. <laughs> Mitchell Monique 4. Hi, Mitchell Monique 4. 3, 2, 1. They said it was a blimp. Oh, my God. It's good to be seen, Miss Monique. Four. All right. Let me get back to y'all. Yeah, man. Puff had Keefe D. Them all of them up, was up in the House of Blues then. You understand? So we watched LL Cool J perform and everything like that. But I don't know. It wasn't no beef. It wasn't. It was nothing. I don't know what Method Man was talking about, but we didn't have no problem. Not at all. I know I wasn't worrying about a damn thing. All my black hands catch was there. You know what I'm saying? We, we was deep then. But Big Num wasn't there. But Lil C said they went everywhere. <laughs> I'm not going to get on them today, y'all. But anyway, uh, there was a big beef behind that whole black gangster movement you understand which really it sold a hundred thousand in the first year or so like that it could have did way better than that because if you look at it it's some hot tracks on there it's some it, it's some street shit it was a good album yeah i'm from the north side I lived on the north side before I moved to Wellston. So, all right, y'all. Listen here. So, 
I told y'all about that story. I wanted to ask y'all one question, man. I got to go back to this shit, man, because this shit is real quick. And, and I just want to answer y'all. I, I, need, I need some help with this because I was talking to a couple of people online and yeah, Vision, he's a sucker for that. Yeah. You know, but nobody believed. They said I was clout chasing when I was talking about how sucker shit Irv Gotti was doing. You understand? Know and he went up there and told you himself, you know, I was a sucker. I was, I was, I, I was stopping uh 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 50 any but any record label asked me about him and everything like that. I was stopping him. I was telling him if you fuck with him, he wasn't the only one doing that. I heard Puff do the same damn thing. Told people the same shit about Craig Mack when Craig Mack wasn't gonna go back to him. And you see, they're coming out with it now. Now, Puff will never admit to that, like Irv did, because he probably a little brighter than Irv in places. You know what I mean? But did you see the shit yourself? Oh, I'm the reason why he went to Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre and them called him. I should have let some of them know. Nigga, that's stupid shit. Get out of here. Ruru Ice. Do I believe Puffy knew that Tupac was going to be shot at the quad? No, you could never know he was going to get shot. But I knew he knew what was going down. I know that. I know he knew what was about to go down. Oh, so what up with you, boy, boy? <laughs> Yo, Gene. It's Shalom. I don't know how he spelled his name, man, but listen. That nigga is hot to death, bruh. Uh, Trevino Lee, uh, ready? I'm going to try to get some information on him, man. That nigga music, oh my God. Night, bro. What up with you, boy? One of my moderators, Miss Carrie Wong. Trying to get a pistol license want to shoot somebody miss one <laughs> just mess with you ma nah they don't want to speak to me about their father death because they don't find out the truth they 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 think they they rather hear propaganda bruh People rather hear propaganda. People don't want to know the truth, man. Then Lee said it spells shalom. Yeah, I think Haitian Jack was cool with Puff. The day they was uh, 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 Zip and all of them had met together with uh, Big D and them, and they was at the Mirage. Haitian Jack is the one who called Puff and said, yo, they down here at the Mirage. All these niggas at the Mirage, Puff. <laughs> Puff called Zip and said, yo, man, y'all making me look bad. Y'all hanging out and partying with them. Zip hung up on his ass. Who <laughs> is in Cali at the time. Yeah, yeah, my man just say, yo, yo, I, I, I'm as authentic, man, as they come. And I'm just sharing you with my life. I'm just sharing you what I saw because it's all stories in history, man, that you could go back and say, share it with somebody, or you could go back and say, yo, that shit never happened, or that shit happened this way. And this is what old boy said. This was that. He was right there.
Yo, listen to me, man. I could call people all kinds of names and everything, man. But always ask yourself, if they were standing right next to you, would you call them that name? I feel you, uh, uh, Sleem. No, man, you know, like, um, if, if I'm going to speak anything about Big, I'm, I'm going to speak about some stuff that Big had told me the day in the Winnebago. And it was it was crazy. It was crazy, man. You know, you got to realize LaCiege had let him down. Yo, this is the crazy thing of it. Lil C's had let him down because he left those pitches out and Charlie Baltimore had what you call saw him and him and Big was fighting and everything. Then D Rock had went off with Puff all day. Where this nigga didn't even fuck with me like that. I mean, like telling me his personal business, telling me his personal business. I'm looking at this kid and yo, what I'm going to say, bro, you know, I'm trying to joke with him, but he got death on his mind. I'm letting him know ain't shit going to happen to you when I'm right. When I'm right here, nigga, ain't shit going to happen with you. Puff left me with him. Puff, no. He no. I'm dead. I'm, I'm going to die for it. I'm going to die for it. Ain't nothing going to happen to him right there. Not, I don't give a fuck. If it, everything I got is gone. Everything I got is gone. I'm throwing everything at you. He was good with me in that Winnebago. But this kid was, yo, this kid was telling me his whole life story. He was telling me the shit about him and Pac. He was just telling me so much, and I was like, yo, damn, I got to let my ears open to, I got to open my ears up to him and stop fucking with him and joking with him because he got a lot to say. He got a lot of shit that he want to get off his mind. Somebody was feeding him bad shit about niggas in Junior Mafia because Big told me, he said, yo, listen to me. My dude, Money L, don't know I know he fucking Lil' Kim. And I was like, Who told him that? I didn't know that. This was doing the hypnotize video when Kim was supposed to be his still, you know, his side piece or whatever. But he was like, yo, Money L don't know that I know he fucking little Kim. I was like, okay. I didn't say tell me more. <laughs> I didn't say tell me more. This nigga's pouring out his heart. He telling me how he gonna dismantle the whole junior mafia. He only keeping Lil' Kim and C's and everybody else gonna have to work for their position and put in work. This is a business now. That kid heart, man, you know, sometimes I wish I wasn't even there, man. But then I know a lot more people probably be dead now, too. One fool ass nigga probably be dead if we'd have stopped at that light. But his dumb ass don't see that shit. But he do. There, it was enough people went to talk to him and told him. Anyway, listen, I came to y'all, man. I've been on here for an hour. 
And I was just telling y'all about the Chaz and Supreme thing. And just a little things, little, little things here and there. Um, next time I come here, I'm gonna try to cook something up for the for the people out here. Make a, a strawberry cream pie and probably fry some catfish like my brother did, but my shit wasn't fresh. Ain't gonna be fresh like that. Straight out the lake. Show you how we do it. Anyway. Listen, thank y'all for coming here on the night. It's been Big Gene from Raw Did the Last Big Night Cooking and Conversation. Salute to all y'all night, night boat, everybody who's out there. Just Jay, come back. Just Jay. Just Jay. We need you. Come back, Just Jay. Come back. <laughs> Not.